Okay, so in chapter 8, we're talking about plant assets. So when we say plant assets, uh, we're talking about uh, tangible assets. Um, tangible really just means they have physical presence. You can see uh, and touch them, right? So the opposite of a tangible asset is like an intangible asset, which would be like a patent or a copyright. Uh, which we get to later in the course. But uh, in this chapter, we're talking about tangible assets with a physical presence that are actively used in operations, all right? which means uh, they're used in the company's day-to-day -day, uh, operations. Uh, expected to benefit future periods. So we're not talking about supplies or um, office paper, things that are used up relatively quickly, you know, pens and pencils. We're not talking about that. We're talking about things that will last from one period to the next. So this is your furniture, your buildings, uh, vehicles, cars, heavy equipment, bulldozers, bobcats, things of that nature. And this category is collectively called plant, property, and equipment. So the idea with plant assets is traditionally they're relatively expensive to acquire, right? And so it would be improper and misleading to take the entire expense of, say, a car, all right, in the year that you purchase it, right? Uh, typically companies, or individuals for that matter, but companies... Uh, use cars for uh, a number of years, right? And so our objective with this chapter is threefold. We're going to learn how to journalize and record the acquisition of uh, long-lived assets, all right? Uh, the use, which is recording uh, are spreading the acquisition cost over the period in which uh, the asset benefits, right? So if you have a car and it lasts 10 years, then you spread that cost, or it's estimated to last 10 years, and you spread that cost over those 10 years, all right? Uh, we'll also account for subsequent expenditures like repairs and maintenance, uh, betterments, and things of that nature. Right. If you have a car, you're going to have to put tires on it. You're going to have to, you know, you may have to overhaul the engine. You may have to put a new transmission. It will learn to account for those types of things as well. And then when an asset is used up, we'll learn how to journalize uh, the disposal thereof. All right. So that's kind of our roadmap uh, to this chapter. All right. When we think of... Um, acquisition costs, right? And, and if there's an analog, maybe we, we can, can compare it to uh, the cost of inventory. Remember, it was all cost to get inventory on site and ready to sell. Well, for assets, the acquisition cost is the purchase price plus all costs necessary to get the asset ready for its intended use. Uh, and that might include, well, that would include setup, uh, testing, uh, installation, insurance, shipping, um, all things necessary to get an asset in place and functioning. Okay. Um, so let's talk a bit about the allocation of lump sum purchase, all right, are sometimes called a basket purchase, where, and it's, it's most common in real estate, where you purchased, for one price typically, you'll purchase land in the buildings and the land improvements thereon, right? Well, from an accounting perspective, we need to split that up because uh, land doesn't depreciate. All right, but buildings and uh, building improvements, which we'll find out is, is really like parking lots and 
retention ponds and fences and things of that nature, uh, they do uh, depreciate. So definitely we need to have those in their own uh, accounts. All right, so in this example, uh, we see CarMax paid $90,000 cash to acquire a group of items consisting of land appraised at 30,000, land improvements appraised at 10,000, and a building appraised at 60,000. All right. Um, and then $90,000 cost will be allocated on the basis of the appraised values shown. Um, so here we've got uh, the building and then the land and they're separate. Um, now note the total appraised value was 100,000. The purchase price was 90, but we're gonna take the relative proportion, which is 60, 40, and apply that to the purchase price. So since the company paid 90 for the land in the building, uh, we'll take 60% of 90, which gives you 54,000. That's your basis for the building. And the building would depreciate. Typically buildings are depreciated over 40 years. And then the land would be put on the books at 36,000. Land doesn't depreciate, so the land would just kind of sit on the accounting records at $36,000.